Questions? Yes. You're talking about vice presidential records? They'll go with the uh, president. Um, but it reminds me of you know, one of the, the challenges that Robert Connor had when he was appointed the archivist was convincing people to give up their records. So he did this inventory, spent a lot of time wandering around Washington discovering where the records were, and then trying to convince people, cabinet level people, to give up the records and he was not having much success. So Roosevelt, in fact, had a cabinet meeting where he laid down the law and basically said, this is the way it's going to be. It's, it's really too early. Um, there is a commitment, however, um, from this administration to be fully digital on day one, um, which we love. Because I see this very much as the transitional presidential library. Um, those figures I cited in terms of the growth in electronic records, um, we will reach a point where it's not paper, it's all digital. And that's not only the, on the president's side, but in the agencies also, because we've put a stake in the ground around 2019. We're not accepting anything um, after 2019 that isn't digital. Yes? It's a very good question because I got a lot of criticism from my own staff about giving away the keys to the kingdom. And this in no way replaces professional archivists' competencies or talents. It recognizes the fact that we've got a lot of people out there who know a whole lot and have something to contribute, who can identify people in a photograph. Oh, I know that person, that's my cousin or can transcribe. I mean, it doesn't, you know, that's not a secret archivist competency. So it's not, um, I'm, we're not training archivists. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so when I met with the directors of the presidential libraries for the first time, uh, we were at the Carter Library. This was my first experience with them as a group. There wasn't a whole lot of oxygen in the room. They are very competitive. Um, and, and this is the, the, the telling moment for me was, so they went around the room and introduced themselves and the director of the Kennedy whips out this um, facsimile of a letter that a kid wrote to JFK asking for information about the proposed Peace Corps. It's a letter from me. Uh, it was a stunning moment, but more stunning was watching the faces of the other 12 directors because it was, oh my God, how am I gonna top this? <laughs> so sure enough, two weeks later, the Eisenhower called, they found two letters from me, I, I met the LBJ, here's, your le here's a copy of the letter you wrote to LBJ, so, yeah. So, Duke Blackwood at Reagan gets the Air Force One, gets the pavilion in Air Force One, oh my God, what are we gonna do to compete with that? Tom Putnam at, at the Kennedy gets a space shuttle from, I mean a space capsule from, from NASA, so highly competitive on the library side and on the foundation side also. Yes. Yeah, 
Yeah, the first one was a letter to Eisenhower when I was 14 years old. He had, I can, I can remember the circumstances because he had been on a trip to India and I had to write a report on this trip. And it's the first time that I ever read the New York Times. My father would bring home the New York Times so I could catch up with what, where, what the president had done you know, in, in India. So I can remember that was the, the um, connection with the president. And, and the letter is, is really very simple. I've, I asked for a, uh, an autographed photograph suitable for framing. <laughs> Uh, they also sent me a copy of a letter from uh, Sherman Adams, who was chief of staff in the Eisenhower White House, um, thanking me for the, my kind letter to the president and the pet elephant. So apparently I sent an artifact. Uh, I have no memory of what I sent, but I sent a pet elephant. So when I got that letter, um, when I got that copy, um, I called the Eisenhower to say, so um, you have artifacts, do you have my elephant? and was told that the president usually gave those kinds of gifts to his grandchildren. So about two years ago, David and Julie were there uh, with their bo new book, and I was telling David the story, and so I said, David, you have my elephant. <laughs> <laughs> he was very quick, and he said, you know, my sister Susan probably has it. <laughs> and the Johnson one uh, was clear. I, um, I was congratulating him for signing the Civil Rights Act, and I asked for a copy of the act. And I actually, in the, um, the letter to Kennedy, I asked, for, I asked for information. Neither one of them sent me anything, so. <laughs> but copies of the letters are hanging outside my office, so when visitors come, I use them as examples of what we do. Because um, we collected that letter, we organized it, um, but most importantly, we, we were able to find find the letter, and that's the business that we're in. So those are our records. Yes? I was an education major at Northeastern University, a cooperative education program where you work a semester and go to school a semester. And my co-op advisor, um, I was uh, suggested going to, the, there was a job open in the libraries at MIT shelving books, and uh, she thought that was pretty close to education. So I argued with her for about six weeks, um, and she, she wore me down. Uh, and if I hadn't, her name is Nancy Caruso, and if I hadn't taken her advice, I wouldn't be standing here in front of you. It was the beginning of an extraordinary experience. I, I was hired to shelve books, but they, they knew they had a sucker um, when they hired me because they expanded my, you know, my, my job and exposed me to, to lots of different um, parts of the way libraries work. And it was just, everyone was having a good time. Everyone loved what they were doing. Um, and I ended up spending 31 years in the libraries at MIT. It was an extraordinary place to learn. We're working on it. A very small portion of each one have, has been digitized. That's what's so exciting about the commitment on the, from the Obama um, folks about what, what it's going to be like when we open. It's um, horrendously expensive, and it's not as simple as slapping a piece of paper on a scanner and it's digitized. <laughs> um, We've had um, success in, across, the, uh, across the board in terms of the content of the National Archives. We've had success with commercial partners in some areas. So if you've ever done an Ancestry.com search, you're using National Archives records, all those census records, uh, ships passenger lists, immigration records, those all came from the National Archives. So we've done a pretty good job in that, in that area. And we've got pockets of excellence um, Truman, um, not Truman, uh, Kennedy, Roosevelt, Reagan um, in, in the digital libraries, uh, presidential libraries, so there is some really good activity going on there. Uh, 
Um, take this the way it's meant. I have enough to worry about. <laughs> um, the only the only interaction comes at uh, presidential sites conferences where the government libraries and the other libraries get together and and compare notes, um, best practices, those kinds of things. Um, we have a wonderful grant program within the National Archives, the National Historic Preservation and Records Commission, which funds the wonderful work being done here on the Abraham Lincoln and other activities. Um, lots of support for smaller institutions in the state, also coming from, from that um, grant, -making, grant making body. Um, the legislation that created the archives is pretty clear spelling out our mandate for um, you know what we're responsible for and it would take um, you know an act of Congress and a lot of money for us to go back and start scooping up other presidential libraries Um, the the individual, first of all, um, the stature of the individual. I think that the papers project has been one of no, it's clear the the most aggressive, the most positive, um, and attempt to be comprehensive uh, of the papers projects. And there are lots of papers projects going on. Uh, and the discoveries that are made every day uh, are just uh, absolutely phenomenal. So you, you should all be very proud of having that here and the work that's being done there. Um, there are a couple of staffers who spend all of their time in my building on Pennsylvania Avenue in the research room going through, meticulously going through records page, page after page looking for Lincoln materials. And I have a habit of wandering around the building and stopping to see, and I'm just always amazed um, when I stop and say, so what's new? And they'll pull something out like, we just found this in the, uh, really exciting. They're all libraries and museums. Each, all 13 of them have a library component and a museum component. Maybe all housed in the same facility? Mm -hmm. uh, except for Ford, where the museum is in um, Grand Rapids and the library is in Ann Arbor. That's the only, that's the only one that's different. I think we have similar missions, and I think we have similar mandates. And um, I, in, in my conversations, um, we're all, you know, doing the same kinds of things, with a focus on the next generation and attracting, um, and compensating in lots of cases for what's going on in public education. Um, the presidential libraries play a huge role whether they're part of the government or not, 
about teaching, especially kids, about how their government works through the lens of that particular president. And that's not being taught a whole lot in school these days. People don't know how their government works. They don't know how laws are made. They don't know the, um, the branches of government, um, don't know about presidential powers. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that is a major contribution that these, these facilities play, both physically and virtually. And every one of these places is trying very hard to exploit the new technologies to get that message um, across online through um, websites and all kinds of uh, creative uh, programs. Yes. Um, I'm a Good for you. Um, it's a uh, it's a wonderful profession. Um, I, I, we're in desperate need of young creative folks uh, because the it's one of those professions that we call the graying of the profession, where all the leadership is you know is going to walk out or fall out um, in the next <laughs> next ten years. So. It's a, it's a personal um, per, a passion of mine. I've I'm, I'm really been beating up on the library schools in the last um, couple of years because we need to do a better job of turning out people who are tech savvy, really curious, love working with people. I'm still amazed at the number of folks who don't, who would rather be working in a back room with the records than, you know, working, you know, with the public. So I think that you know, the, the uh, public service uh, focus is huge. Um, I think that technology, as I, as I was saying, has revolutionized the way not only people do their research, find the information, but it has raised expectations about what people, uh, how people expect to be able to find information. And it's up to you guys to be creating those services and products and interpreting those needs in the delivery of, of information. We've done, we've done a whole lot in terms of, of creating uh, massive amounts of digital content. There, and, and lots of people think that means, well, you don't need librarians anymore, or you don't need libraries anymore, you got all this digital content. More and more important to have librarians to be able to help people navigate that landscape, and also to um, to ensure the quality of that content um, for especially for the K through 12 community. How do you go with budgetary fluctuations? And uh, what advice would you give Illinois on the best way forward to deal with the problems that this library has experienced? One of the biggest problems that I inherited when I arrived was the fact that not many folks up on the hill knew who we were or what we did. Um, so it's hard to feel good about funding um, an agency if you have no idea of what their mandate is or what, um, you know, what they bring to the, to the government. So we've been doing, I've been spending a lot of time, I have a, a federal relations person, staff, um, and I've been, I spend a lot of time up in the hill, one-on-one -on -one with members of Congress. Uh, we do a lot of orientation of new members, drag them down the hill um, to uh, get a sense of the, the records. Um, we have become, for uh, members of both sides and both houses, the place to bring constituents, family visitors, we do a lot of um, special high-end vault tours for members of Congress so they get a, some sense of who we are. And it, it has paid off. Um, we're loved um, by everyone. It's a nonpartisan agency. You know, we tell the good stuff and the bad stuff through the records. You know, we don't favor one party over another. Um, and we've got great, you know, we've got great stuff. 
So, um, and I have for five years been tying our message to K through 12 education, the, the role that we can play and do play in education and education resonates uh, um, with folks on the Hill. So we have a very good relationship. We're in the budget season now. La yeah, right there. So people, people often ask me if I'm, you know, working on a book or taking notes for a book. Are you keeping a journal? Um, uh, no, because uh, those are discoverable. And um, <laughs> and in fact, I've I've threatened that uh, my first writing venture after I leave will be a 13-volume set on presidential libraries. <laughs> Um, it is the most complicated of all the things that I'm responsible for. Those are the most complicated of all of my responsibilities because you've got the federal government, you've got a private foundation, and you've got the family. Um, unless all three of them are in sync, you know, you've got you've got issues. Um, it will it will. Thank you for for, for um, those compliments. Um, I will. I certainly have been thinking about it. It'll be after I leave. It won't be right away. I'm, I'm very fortunate that I have a, um, uh, I guess you would call it a life sentence. Um, my, um, my appointment is a presidential appointment, but it isn't tied to the administration, so there have only been 10 of us since the beginning of, of the National Archives. So when the administration changes, I don't change, unless I choose to, um, choose to change. Thanks for coming tonight. <laughs>